Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we've got another mod to showcase. A small one, but I feel it's actually quite needed. You see, this mod is called Vampire Coast Features for Lokia Felhart, and the name pretty much tells you exactly what it does, but it's kind of important because you see, Lokia Felhart came around the time of the Vampire Coast, and he was pretty generic. They've tried to make him a bit more special as time has gone on, but really what Lokia just needed was a little bit of flavor from the Vampire Coast mechanics, just to have a little bit of fun and make him more unique. The thing is, Lokia is actually a really, really interesting character, and he's one of my favorite Dark Elves. I used to run a Corsair build in Warhammer Fantasy Tabletop whenever I wanted to deal with stress, considering that you could never really rank up those miniatures too well, but it was always a nice thing to have for a theme army, you know, something completely different, and that's why I like the Dark Elves so much, they were versatile in terms of theming, uh, so if you're playing fluffy lists, that was something that you could do well, and that's what we kind of want from Total War Warhammer, right? Relive the glory days and have themed armies, which you can do with Lokia very, very well already, but having a little bit of extra flavor just to kind of go around his lore and stuff, just makes it all the better. I played a few hours of this mod and let's just discuss the changes. So you've already seen that you've got access to infamy and this is going to work as a new resource for you. Don't you worry you're not doing all the usual Vampire Coast stuff as far as I've seen from my own campaign, mostly because I've been using the infamy as a separate resource and you're gonna see why now. But it's kind of cool because this means that you feel like more of a pirate and well, that's what you can expect from a Black Art Corsair, right? And this is because Infamy for you is used to upgrade your troops and make them a lot stronger, specifically just your Black Art Corsairs, but it works out quite well. The standard melee variant can be made better for melee, so increasing its ward save, increasing its armor and its spell resistance, or even giving them magical attacks and frost attacks. So you've already got a decent amount here, Obviously, keep in mind that you're going to be boosting up your Black Art Corsairs anyway, but it shows that they can get even stronger and they will stay as your mainstay unit. The upgrades for the range version make them a lot more versatile, so you've got access to extra missile resistance so you can keep them up up front. It's quite a big buff, to be honest. Extra range plus 20%, which is actually really, really good, or plus 20% extra speed. This means that you can have them moving around and just being able to flank the enemy after you've shot all your arrows, then you can go directly into combat. It makes them your flanking units while still keeping them as a range unit. I really like the concept here, as this means that they'll be a lot more useful. I actually really liked uh, running full Black Art Corsair armies. It's a pretty good system. Now, there is more to this. So, you do have access to treasure maps, and there are some treasures that will pop up within Grand Cafe. So obviously this is the usual time where you'll be able to actually dig up for treasures. Only your Lord characters can do this, so Lokia and your generic Lords. You won't be able to do this with heroes. Uh, I'm not sure if the mod is trying to find a way how to do that or not, but it does work out quite well anyway because it's going to be in your general direction as you start expanding, and you can get a decent amount of money at the very beginning, which I really, really do like. I think it's a system which will make things a little bit easier and a little bit better for you to actually deal with, as, um, you know, Grand Cafe is a weird start. The Black Art Corsairs and Lokia in general are very, very strong, but if you're playing in harder difficulties, or if you just want to more roleplay, you know, being able to dig for treasure and stuff adds to that level of, well, really just immersion, which you kind of want from these types of games. Yeah, it's a sandbox, but a little bit of immersion is always really good. Now, the Pieces of Eight mechanic is also here too. This is the same as the Treasure Hunt section, and as you can see, it is situated where all the Pieces of Eight are. So this is the vanilla ones, uh, apparently from what I've seen, it's just hard-coded there. And it just kind of makes sense, it gives you a reason to travel, it's not like it actually takes that long considering that sea lanes are a thing. And these all provide very strong bonuses towards your Black Art Corsairs, making them even stronger and more of a menace than they were before. So yeah, if you don't want to boost them up for some reason, you don't have to get them. But yeah, just get a sea lane over to Lustria, then travel a little bit and you're golden. Or if you want very early on into your campaign, if you get the option because it's a timed quest thing, then you just take Karun Car, make an army and then start traveling from there. 
yeah, there's loads of ways to be able to go through it. You can leave that for later game or anything, really. In my own personal campaign, I did send off an army that way quite early on, as I did take Karen Khan, and I thought that was going to be the smarter option. There are also some events that will pop up, just like the Vampire Coast, where you could use Infamy as a resource and to get some faction-wide bonuses, right? So... Uh, be able to get some more campaign movement range or some extra growth faction-wide or casualty replenishment for all armies. This adds to a little bit more flavor, which again gives you a bit more of a unique campaign with Lokia Felhart compared to other ones. Keep in mind that Lokia himself was an FLC lord before the FLC characters started becoming a lot more unique. So this is really something that I can appreciate quite heavily. So the footage that you've been seeing on screen is what I've been recording for the purpose of this video. It's not my own personal campaign. My personal campaign has been going a lot longer at this point. I've been playing for a few hours. I really like this. I honestly really do like this. And I want to talk about my experience uh, before anything. The coves are not implemented here and the um, pseudo horde function for Lokia, which is a shame because I think that he could do very well with that. But I understand that the modder feels that it would just devalue the uh, pseudo legendary lord that you get with your actual black arc at the beginning of your campaign. So I completely understand. I honestly completely understand. Either way, I must say I had a lot of fun. It adds to a little bit of just extra oomph, which is just a little sprinkle of stuff, but it can change a campaign rather radically and give you a lot more fun from it. I played for a few hours because I couldn't sleep last night, and I must say that I had a lot of fun. It gave me reason to go back to Lokia. I played Lokia when Immortal Empires first came out, and that was obviously because he had such a radical move as he was a move to Grand Cafe. And that was already good enough, but a little bit of extra stuff just to kind of take him away from all the other Dark Elf factions who, let's be honest, a lot of the Dark Elves kind of work the same way, despite having different mechanics. Malekith definitely needs a bit of a rework. Morathi needs a little bit more to her changes just to make her really, really fun. And Lokia, as we can see, doesn't really need a lot. Just some stuff that's already in-game. I'm a big advocate for reusing mechanics if at least it makes sense. Yes, it shouldn't be something that is very, very common, where loads of new lords are just reusing stuff. But if it's going to be in this similar vein, yeah, I think this works out perfectly fine. Now, we're not going to talk too much about the whole what we want in the future thing, because at the end of the day, we know Creative Assembly are listening, and Creative Assembly are willing to go back and actually update Lords. We've seen that with Manfred recently, with Volkmar. So I feel like the future is pretty good for these things. But until then, mods such as these will add in a lot of flavor and just allow for people to try out different playstyles. This is why I'm a big advocate for modding, not because it just changes stuff around and it's uh, quote unquote better than CA, but rather that it just adds another reason for you to play a specific character once again. Anyways, the mod itself can be found in the description below and I would highly suggest trying it out. It's really, really fun and it's going to give you a reason to play as Lokia again. With all that being said, let me know what you guys think about this mod in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. Until then, I shall see you all again very, very soon. I hope the holidays aren't driving you too crazy like they are for me. Yeah, fun times.